Moving on from that, I think, um, I think another pet peeve of mine that I have to bring up, I actually surprised I didn't think of it sooner, because it kind of ties back into what you were going to say before about badly used cutscenes. I hate it, cutscenes which pretty much undermine a victory you've just accomplished. Like, for example, I hate it when you beat a boss in the game, and then the, in the cutscene it shows the boss suddenly smack your character away and go, Oh no, I was only toying with you, I'm still more powerful. It's like, come on, I spent all this time trying to kick your ass and it turns out you're just perfectly fine? Yeah, I totally get that. Because it's basically the game going back on the progress you made within but, the context of the story as well. But yeah, it's just annoying, and I'm not just talking about curb stop battle here, because okay, I get the point, I know why those exist. It's more instances like, there's one, one moment in Sonic 06 where you spend all this time trying to beat Silver, and then in the cutscene he's on his knees and panting, Sonic goes over to look at him, and then Silver just gets up, blasts him with a psychic ray, and knocks Sonic out in one hit. It's like, what?! If you're gonna have Silver knock him out anyway, why did it matter so much if I won the battle or not, you know? <laughs> it's like, if you took that battle of Kratos in Tales of Symphonia, and remove all impact from actually defeating him, which is a task in and of itself. And if yeah. you actually had to win the battle. Yeah, that kind of crap, it really just isn't on, because it's annoying, it completely segments gameplay and story, and frankly, it's just insulting to the player as well, when you force them to do all of that work, and then you just decide, nope, we're going to take it away from you because we're evil. Yeah, I understand exactly where you're coming from with that. Before we continue on, I should also mention that in the spirit of things, I decided to open this discussion up to audience participation and ask you, the audience, what your biggest pet peeves in gaming were. Use the updates via http.thejourneymonkey.tumblr.com. And we only got one response. Thanks, guys, we love you. From our good old buddy Roy Havenstone 2. Oh, he's a dedicated one. Keep it up, Roy. Yeah. Please advertise us to the rest of the fans so they remember we exist. <laughs> <laughs> My first own to his personal pet peeve is annoying AI in games. Before we get into this, I do have to ask, annoying in what sense? Oh, don't worry, he explains the sense in about three paragraphs. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's definitely dedicated. Ahem. <clears throat> I rarely use the auto battle feature in RPGs, partially because I prefer beating control of the action the characters on screen, but mostly because, in my experience, the AI in auto battles tends to make some very stupid decisions, wasting items, special moves, etc. It makes me grateful that games like Tales of the Abyss you can command the AI to do or not do certain things, but it's not just in RPGs where it's a problem. In this DS puzzle game, Think Bejeweled, I played a while back, there was a 2 on 2 challenge in single player mode where the goal was to reach a score of 35,000 points. For all the good my AI partner did, it might as well have been a 1 vs 2 match since I had to gain 33,500 of that total. <laughs> yeah, I can sympathise with that. <laughs> yeah, and it isn't just a problem in RPGs, although sometimes it is amusing in these games. I find it can also be a problem in FPS games as well. Whenever the AI companion you have coming with you in some of those more team-based games just kind of lets you get boned right up the jacksy. Yeah, pretty much. Even as or one of those escort missions where they just wander straight into the enemy. Oh god, as Yati put an AI on the level of a bucket of retarded pies. <laughs> Oh jeez, but there is one other example of AI which I will agree with, and that's in the third paragraph he presents. Furthermore, I find the AI in fighting games like the City of Final Fantasy to be very sporadic, where they will do next to nothing until provoked, or often flip-flop between being complete pansies and knowing exactly when to block and counter your every move. It stands as one of the major flaws of what is otherwise a very fun PSP title. It's not just this city, yeah. Pretty much every single fighting game has problems of AI. I can... Yeah. Oh my holy god, Soul Calibur V. <laughs> if you value your sanity, or if you're not on the level of an ungodly martial arts Jackie Chan Grandmaster, do not play <laughs> Legendary Souls. Oh god. 
any fighting games like that, really, that's a problem. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do absolutely love fighting games, but the difficulty always flips between so easy it makes you feel bad for beating them up, to so ridiculously hard that it's almost impossible to win, because, like Roy says, they sometimes the AI is set so that they automatically read everything you're gonna do and will block or just use the exact right attack to counter. It's just, how are you supposed to win with something like that? Yeah, it's like they take all the AI opponents and make them godmodding shonen villains. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> just, just to give you an example, Fairy Souls, again, Soul Calibur V, it took me a week to beat the first character. Oh, wow. <laughs> Needless to say, I didn't go back to that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh god, actually, another to uphold that AI that's not in fighting games as well, but it does tend to happen. Mario Kart. Oh my god, Mario Kart. I don't really remember the Mario Kart AI that well, because the last Mario Kart I, game I played was on the N64, and I haven't had that game in nine years now. <laughs> Okay, well, Mario Kart 64, it wasn't that big of a problem so much. It was more the later games, where... It would be fine with 50 or 100 CC. It's when you got at 150 CC and beyond that the AI starts being cheating bastards. Because what happens is, first off, no matter how far you get, eventually the AI will speed up your opponent so that they will catch up to you no matter what you do. And second, this is especially a big problem in Mario Kart Wii to the point where I just flat out gave up because I couldn't stand it anymore. The items, and then I have a lot of them in your later Mario Kart games, will completely knock you around and cause you to do the spin out and take you at least 5 seconds to recover. The AI will just shrug it off and carry on like normal. In fact, there's one instance where, I, where when I saw it happen I just thought, okay, feck this, this is impossible. Uh, there was a blue, blue cell right behind me, so I slowed down, let the guy first overtake me, and let the blue cell strike him instead. Now, for those of you who don't know, in Mario Kart Wii, the blue cells essentially act like nukes. They hold in on the guy in first, create what is a gigantic explosion, and then when it happens to you, you flip over, your character starts making noise, and, it, and your acceleration goes back down to zero, and you have to crawl at a slow speed to try and get it back up, at which point five people have already overtaken you. The AI flipped over once, and then went back to top acceleration, right in front of me. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, but yeah, that's pretty much when I gave up on ever attempting 150cc on Mario Kart at home. Surprisingly, it was much, much easier than Mario Kart 7. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I've gotten used to it, you know? <laughs> okay, we had a late entrant that came after the recording, but I thought I might as well include it. This comes from Peter Tresenberg, and he gives the following situations. 1. Whenever a game is a forced stealth section. Guessing he means on the like of Wind Waker, where they take away your sword at the start. And I can also remember one irritating one in Fragile Dream, where they decided to throw in motion sensors. God, that was annoying. He also mentions mandatory fetch quests. Oh, we could give you the thing, but first you have to go all over the freaking planet to get these other things. Yeah, to be honest, fetch quests can sometimes be annoying even when they're not mandatory. Like, Dragon Quest, I love that game, but honestly, a lot of the side quests are... Oh, I need this one item which can only be found by one enemy on the other side of the freaking planet. Oh, did I mention it's a rare enemy? Yeah, those can get annoying. And the first situation he gives is... I'm clearly evil, but I'm about to betray you. The four sisters on Phantom Hourglass spring to mind. That or Zay or in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. I mean, yeah, I know a lot of this because of being Jalma Savvy and the characters probably wouldn't know it, but... Still, it's annoying to have to put up with something when you clearly know, to quote Amrul Akbar, it's a trap. But yeah, thank you Peter for leaving that comment, and now it's back to the broadcast. And there is pretty much nothing more to say other than game designers, if you happen to be listening to this, for the love of God, don't include these features. They're annoying for a reason, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't appreciate their inclusion. <laughs> oh dear. Now with that cathartic sense of relief. <laughs> <laughs>
That concludes both the discussion and this month's show. If you have your own thoughts and opinions on the discussion or any questions you'd like to send to us, please leave them in the comment section. That's what it's there for. And don't forget, you can go to djollymonkey.tumblr.com, Tumblr without an E for some reason, where you'll not only see written reviews from me every week, but you'll also see updates for when I'm about to record and what the discussion will be if we're planning to have one that week. But that just wraps everything up for now, so until next time, I've been the Jelly Monkey. And I've been Sven the Crusader. Insert Yahtzee reference because I make those. That was Monkey Broadcast, a monthly review discussion show hosted by the Jelly Monkey and Sven the Crusader. If you feel that you've been the subject of slander or that your copyright has been misused, please PM me and I'll try and get round and fix it as soon as possible. We also welcome any comments, be it feedback or your own viewpoints on any of the things we've discussed. Until next month, have fun kids! <laughs>